Hello, everybody. Thank you for watching our Software Defined Radio Academy channel. I wish all you, uh, all our international and regional listeners, a wonderful good morning or good day. Uh, I have the hope that the weather will continue to be not so nice at your location. Then you will certainly have time to attend our conference in the upcoming hours, and it will be able to do so. I hope you have enough uh, water next to you as I, <laughs> this is very important, <laughs> that <laughs> you will be uh, keep on fascinated and stick to the screen. Of course, we have also put together a great program uh, for the second day of the Software Defined Radio Academy. We hope to meet your personal interests with these contributions. And our conference has the, the purpose to enable radio exper uh, experienced experts and software experts to exchange good ideas. Questions and comments can be entered into the video chat on YouTube during the presentation. Speakers read these questions and can answer them either in writing or uh, in the chat or later live by audio. So far, our online conference has gone well according to the plan. Minor technical difficulties were generally uh, well <coughs> recaptured. The mix-up of a contribution from last night has led to the fact that we want to start a little bit earlier today, and now we want to catch up this contribution. So, Markus, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Michael. <clears throat> so, thanks also from my side for coming in, also a little earlier today. Um, well, we shifted one talk from Jean-Michel Fried from uh, Besançon from the European Radio Days um, to today's session. <clears throat> and um, uh, for those of you who have uh, not been able to follow yesterday's stream, I'm going to repeat a little introduction on Jean-Michel. And um, well, Jean-Michel has completed his PhD in engineering in, in the year 2000, and he's been working on short-range radar systems and cooperative targets from 2006 to 2014 as an engineer in a company before joining university as an associate professor with his research activity hosted by the time and frequency department of the Femto ST Institute in France in Besançon. And <clears throat> he has been developing GNU radio project since 2012. And his talk uh, for us today will be um, uh, is, is titled a Bitstream Clock Synchronization in an ACARS Receiver. <clears throat> it's about porting uh, the uh, GNU Radio GR ACARS module to GNU Radio 3.8. And um, well, as as um, as I've presented yesterday, and, and the, the mode of operation here was that we pre-recorded all the talks, and also in this case we have pre-recorded the talk um, for quality reasons, you know, bad internet connections and all those things that can happen, as they happened to us yesterday also. Um, but um, there is a pre-recorded talk, and Jean-Michel is already here with us in our studio, in our virtual studio. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to play the talk, the pre-recorded -re pre talk, and dear audience, you are invited already now to ask and state your questions in the YouTube channel. And Jean-Michel is going to answer your questions live during, uh, during the video. And for me, um, I would like to announce that I will not be part of the um, 
the uh, finalizing moderation. The finalizing moderation will be done by Michael Hartier, my colleague, because um, I will have some assignment in another YouTube channel, which is part of the Ham Radio organization. And I will come back later in one of the later talks. So, okay, let's hand the microphone over to um, our studio control. Sebastian, please go ahead with the video. Thank you. Um, let us discuss how we ported the ACARS the receiver uh, out of tree block for GNU Radio 3.8 and how uh, we use this opportunity to improve uh, bitstream clock synchronization in the data stream from this uh, very simple protocol as we're going to see. So this presentation is given, was uh, prepared with Thomas Lavarenne and is presented by myself, Jean-Michel Fried. Um, so the, the ACARS is an aircraft communication addressing and reporting system, is a protocol used by pilots and planes to communicate uh, either telemetry or free text messages from planes to uh, uh, ground to airports. It's a protocol developed in the 70s to lighten the burden of uh, communication work of pilots uh, and so having been developed in such uh, early days of uh, digital communication, it's very simple to analyze. So if you look at uh, the raw data, this is a, a, an ACAR sentence uh, that was collected. So it starts in the beginning uh, with a header uh, for a wake up signal. So uh, this is the 2400 Hz, um, 128 bit uh, uh, wake up message. And then we have alternating 2400 Hz or 1200 Hz uh, parts of a message encoding the two bit states. So we learn from the literature that uh, a zero is encoded as a half of the 1200 Hz period and uh, a one is encoded as a full period of, of 2400 Hz. So it's, it's a audio frequency signal, it's a minimum shift keying, so you see there is no transition from one to another uh, bit state. And so it will be quite easy to analyze because we uh, reach an uh, audio frequency uh, baseband signal that we must uh, analyze. The carrier uh, is centered around 131 uh, MHz. Uh, in Western Europe, we have three channels that can be heard. The primary at 131.725 MHz, a secondary, and a couple of additional channels. Uh, so we'll see the consequence of having these multiple channels uh, uh, transmitting our car's information. Uh, so it's it's uh, well within uh, the, the DVB-T dongle, the RTL-SDR dongle, so it, it's uh, well suited as a, a, a first uh, initial out of tree block and uh, we published in 2012 the first implementation of this protocol uh, and now it was time to port it to 3.8, uh, GNU Radio 3.8 and, and improve it, its, uh, its performance. Uh, we'll see what this means. So actually, how do we prototype this, uh, this, uh, this uh, protocol decoding? So the way I like to do this is to first uh, collect the data, save them, run the decoder. Uh, I'm more familiar with uh, MATLAB programming uh, here with New Octave. Uh, and once uh, the algorithm has been developed uh, in Octave, then I will port it to C++ and then to, uh, to GNU Radio Framework uh, to, to try to make things more, a bit more rational. So ACARS, uh, we've seen, is, is uh, two bit states encoded as uh, 2400 and 1200 Hz. So we will make one strong assumption. We assume that we know the sampling frequency. Uh, the block assumes that uh, the, the baseband signal is uh, collected at sampling frequency of uh, 48 kilohertz. And because we need to uh, identify the two bit states, of course, we're going to make uh, two filters. Uh, and filtering is implemented as a convolution. So uh, the easiest way is to define your uh, convolution kernel as uh, a 2400 Hz or 1200 Hz uh, sine wave. Uh, the, the protocol tells us that it should be a half a 1200 period or a one full 2400 Hz, uh, 2400 Hz uh, period. Uh, actually, we realized that by taking two periods, although we have a poor time resolution, 
our filtering capability was made up earlier. So actually we're going to use two periods of each one of these uh, 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 sine waves. And uh, doing so, we have our convolution kernel. So the usual way you would implement your convolution uh, in uh, Octave is to use a convolution function uh, by giving the data set and your kernel. Um, and what we've seen is that when you do this, this convolution, you have some leftover high frequency uh, component that is uh, best to be filtered out. So uh, we filter out anything above uh, 3400 Hz by using a filtering function. So we compute the taps using a least square uh, finite impulse response filter uh, tap computation, and then we apply the filtering. So this is your classical flowchart where you do convolution, filtering, and then you would process all the, all the, the, the bit state. So these are the resulting uh, curves that you obtain. In red is the 1200 hertz component, in blue is the 2400, uh, and you see here the various uh, bit states evol evolving as a function of time. Uh, actually, what we're going to see is that uh, because of a convolution theorem, uh, a convolution, if you read the convolution function of MATLAB, it's actually implemented as uh, the dot product of Fourier transform because the fast Fourier transform is an n log n uh, complexity algorithm as opposed to the n squared complexity of, of your convolution. And so by going through the Fourier domain, you improve your computational capability. And so uh, the practical implementation of the Fourier transform uh, will allow us to uh, do both the convolution and the filtering because we have this intermediate step where we are in the, in the frequency domain. So we might as well uh, mix convolution and filtering. Uh, we're going to come back to this part a, a bit later. So now we have our two uh, bit states, soft bits, uh, continuous values from, uh, from minus one to plus one, here a bit offset. And we need to decide uh, what are the, uh, the bit states. So the usual way of doing this is we're told that um, uh, ACARS is transmitted at uh, 2,400 bit per second. So we know that we are uh, sampling at 48 kilo sample per second. So you just sample every 20 uh, sample and you get your bit state. Uh, what we did here is we detected the beginning of the message. If you remember, there is this header with uh, 128 bits transmitted at 2400 Hz. And this is the core issue is that all the synchronization, all subsequent synchronization will assume that this initial uh, rise in, in the signal is detected. So what we used to do in the previous implementation of GR cars was to continuously detect the 2400 uh, header. Uh, using continuous uh, Fourier transforms. What we do now is because we're going to see that we have narrow band channels uh, for analyzing each ACAS channel, uh, rather than doing this continuous Fourier transform, we just look at the standard deviation uh, within each channel and, and a rise in standard deviation means there is a transmission occurring and then only we start doing Fourier transforms uh, uh, for decoding the bit states. This might need a bit of a refinement if you want a better detection uh, capability. So we start uh, with this, this uh, clock synchronization header and uh, by detecting the, the rise in standard deviation, we know when the message starts and we know that every 20 sample we have a new bit state so we can sample the bits. And uh, by selecting which is the strongest, uh, either the 1200 or the 2400 uh, uh, bit state, we can select uh, which uh, uh, bit value is, is, uh, is the most uh, possible. So we go from soft bits, continuous values to hard bits, zero or one. And what you see here, I've put the red arrows where we hint at some issue uh, due to the initial sampling error uh, in the very beginning of the message. You see here that the bit states are slightly offset with respect to the maximum of, uh, of, the, of, of these, uh, of these uh, values here. And this error will accumulate uh, as the message is being transmitted, meaning that uh, very often we end up with some messages that are not uh, completely decoded due to this uh, erroneous uh, synchronization. So this is actually where the clock synchronization is going to really help. And uh, what we are going to implement uh, 
is this this uh, uh, edge detection uh, on on the bit state. So as mentioned earlier, this is actually the, the difference between the octave and and the and the C implementation, the, the new radio. Uh, instead of doing sequentially the convolution with the two kernels and then the filtering and selecting which bit value is most possible, uh, what we're going to do now is to uh, take the Fourier transform of a signal, the Fourier transform of a kernel, do the multiplication, which uh, is half of a convolution, uh, the next half being the inverse Fourier transform, but what we're going to do is introduce the filtering uh, in the frequency domain, then do the uh, inverse Fourier transform of a filtered signal, and do this, uh, this detection. And now what we would like to address is, is this clock synchronization here, this block, that aims at uh, selecting the time when the decision is made for uh, defining the heartbeat state. Um, and this is actually what, 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 we're, what the, the improvement that we've brought now. So um, why did I mention that now we have narrowband uh, analysis? Well, uh, there was an issue uh, in that the previous uh, GR cars block was using FFTW and the FFTW library is known not to be fret safe, meaning uh, as, as is uh, mentioned here on, on, on the web page of FFTW, that uh, the planners uh, share some data and uh, actually you cannot uh, have multiple FFTW running in parallel. So especially in new radio, uh, which is exactly the, the context of the application structures as a set of plugins which are unaware of each other here, all these ACARS blocks are unaware of each other. So there is no way of sharing a mutex or uh, whatever protection mechanism to avoid uh, uh, conflict between these, these variables. So this is where we shifted from FFTW to the GNU Radio uh, FFT, so it's a bit of a different framework, but uh, GNU Radio FFT, which actually uh, is, is, is over uh, FFTW, uh, will allow you to have multiple instances of, of the same block running in parallel. And, and this, uh, this allows us now to have narrow band uh, frequency analysis. Uh, here we have one low pass filter with a receiver locked on 131.725 megahertz and the frequency translating fear filter to detect the, the channel that is 200 kilohertz below, so 131.525 megahertz. And by having two amplitude demodulation uh, um, uh, blocks, then we have multiple ACARS receivers. We're going to see that we're going to intensively uh, multiply the number of, of ACARS decoding blocks. So, so that was one of the big improvements here. So this clock synchronization issue. Um, in the beginning, we have this, uh, this erroneous uh, uh, threshold detection. And as we uh, move on in the message, uh, we have this error that accumulates. And because ACARS is a differential protocol, uh, any bit error that we make at some point is going to accumulate throughout the sentence and, and the whole sentence will end up garbled. So what we propose as, as an algorithm, uh, and, and this is shown here as these red arrows, is that uh, whenever we have the same bit state, actually synchronization does not really matter. Whether you, you sample these continuous streams of, of uh, zeros at this point or at this point, it's still going to be uh, well decoded. The issue lies in these fast changes of bit state. And so what we propose is to detect uh, uh, unique bit states, so one frame by zeros or zero frame by ones. And whenever we detect this unique bit state here, uh, we're going to lock on the maximum of a signal. So here you see that we had to shift instead of 20, which is the theoretical uh, step from one bit state to another. We detect the maximum and here we had to shift by three uh, samples, then another one sample here. So the, the initial here, there was no locking because it was always the same bit state. Here the timing does not matter so much. And now for the first time we have this this unique bit state. So this is the largest shift that we had to make. And then we just have to, to make some small adjustments. Here you see later in the message, again, we have this unique bit state. So we shift by one unit. Then we have this unique bit state. We shift by minus one. So we, we're going to lock on, on, on the clock uh, of, of, these, of these various bits. Um, so once you've got the bits, well, you uh, convert bits into sentences, and this is uh, well done using some of the many uh, resources that you find on, on the internet uh, de describing the sentence. So you've got the header here, which is uh, this 128 uh, to, uh, bits at, at uh, 2400 hertz. 
Uh, then we've got the synchronization bit. Uh, you'll see always 2B2A 1616, which is uh, the, the, this, uh, this indication that the, that the decoding is going well. The start of header, we've got the kind of message, we've got the address of the plane. So this is this uh, A7, BA4, BAK here, that is the, the aircraft identifier, um, the identifier of the block. So which is the message that is being transmitted? So you know that you've missed a message if these are not contiguous. Then we have a start of text, uh, we have uh, uh, various messages uh, of varying length, and we they finish with the end of text, so, so, so the value number three. So uh, if you take the raw sentences, so decoding uh, bits to bytes and bytes interpreted as ASCII characters, you've got this big long sentence, and if you parse this big sentence, you end up with interpretation of uh, aircraft number, flight number, uh, message sequence and the payload. Payload can be most of the time telemetry, sometimes it will be a bit more interesting free text, so all kinds of all kinds of payloads. So was the work worth it? Uh, well, yes, uh, over uh, so uh, a few messages were collected before the lockdown. So as uh, planes were still flying and, and uh, taking off and landing in, in Roissy Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris. And uh, over six minutes, we collected uh, 42 sentences. And had we not implemented uh, clock synchronization, 15 of these, of these uh, sentences would have been uh, erroneously decoded by the end of, of the sentence. So um, 15 out of 42 means that now we have 42 sentences that are properly decoded, and that's an improvement of 35% uh, in, in the decoding rate. So what is a poorly mes decoded message? Here you see it starts well, and then, then at some point you've got this loss of synchronization, and your uh, nice uh, sentence ends up completely garbled because, uh, well, you can see it on, on the parity bit. So the, uh, you've got uh, a, a parity bit, uh, the eighth bit uh, of a protocol is an odd parity bit, and if this, uh, if, if they don't add to zero, it means that you had one error in the communication. So you see here that we detect that we have some error, and and because it's not a, 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 a checksum, well, we cannot correct it. We just know that one bit was erroneous. Actually, this information might be used because it's a differential protocol. We could use this parity bit to try to. Um, uh, decode properly the next uh, bytes. Uh, at the moment, we're not doing this. And the properly decoded message, well, you see here that uh, thanks to the clock synchronization, we can uh, avoid this uh, loss of, of lock here at the end, and, and the party bits uh, all end up being zero, except at the very end when we when we go beyond the end of the message. So so that, that was really worth it. You see that, that the new uh, decoding capability is made better. Uh, so I mentioned that now we can run multiple implementations of, of Jira cars in parallel. So this means that we can have a frequency translating fear filter uh, between the wideband source, uh, typically uh, uh, 1.15 or 1.4 megahertz bandwidth, and we can select the various channels. So you see here we've got uh, the, 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 the received signal centered on 131.75 megahertz, then we've got one across channel 200 kilohertz below, we've got another across channel 100 kilohertz above, and these are various other messages uh, lying in the in the airband. So these are some of the messages transmitted on the primary across channel. This is uh, some of the messages transmitted on the secondary across channel. And you see that the both decoders are operating properly. So this was decoded May 1st when, when there was already lockdown and fewer planes uh, flying uh, in the air. Uh, furthermore, we can actually have multiple uh, decoders, uh, receivers running parallel just to check uh, the performance of each one of them. So here is an RTL SDR, here is a, a Pluto SDR, and here is a new UHD, so that's a B200. And each one of these receivers was connected to uh, one antenna. And you see that each receiver is connected to the three possible channels. So uh, we've got the low pass filter centered on zero. We've got the two frequency translating few filters to decode plus 100, minus 200. And we repeat this pattern for all, uh, all receivers. So you see that you end up with uh, quite a few GR cars uh, blocks. So we've got these, uh, these uh, decoders uh, running all in parallel to, uh, to uh, collect the data from the three receivers each uh, receiving the free channels. Um, 
here you can hardly read the text, but uh, if you just look at the analysis I made, so this is an RTL SDR uh, DVBD dongle, that's the B200, both of which are centered on 131A25 megahertz. And uh, what we see here is in red, the exact same sentence collected by the two uh, receivers. Uh, so we do have quite a few uh, big sentences that are the same. And a few uh, green here is a uh, beginning of a sentence that are the same and then the, we lose uh, synchronization. So these are poorly received signals. And again, we have some headers that are nicely coherent between the two receivers uh, before we lose the, the actual payload. So uh, having multiple receivers allows for checking that indeed uh, they all detect the same uh, messages. So here is an example of a, a decoded uh, message uh, from 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 a plane uh, leaving from Geneva, so close to the to the Swiss border where we're located. So we're located here in Besançon. Uh, the plane is located around here, and uh, there you can see that we get the same identifier of uh, the same registration from the plane, and we get the same uh, flight identifier of this uh, Chinese airline. Uh, going to Shanghai. So, so we get some, some messages and actually what you can hardly read here is that there is some electrical fault. You can check on the slides on the web. Uh, so it's always uh, interesting to learn uh, what's happening in a plane flying as it just took off from, from, the, from the Swiss airport. So the, the data that we collect are consistent. If you check the position uh, that's uh, 7 degree east, 47 degree north, which is nicely consistent with the ADSB messages collected by flightradar24.com. So we do have uh, consistent uh, information collected. How far actually can we go? Well, here is an example of, uh, of uh, a flight um, uh, that is detected. So this is the path. Actually, it, it left Paris and it's flying here. So we're located over here. So that's 125 kilometers. Uh, again, the messages are consistent. The aircraft identifier match. Uh, you see that the flight identifier match. It's an Air France flight. And uh, Fury tells you that um, uh, whatever uh, uh, emitter is flying at a height H over the Earth with curvature radius R uh, should be a line of sight detected. So from horizon to horizon, uh, the range is um, uh, radius of the Earth, uh, R cos of R divided by R plus H. That's just basic trigonometry. You've got this, this here, this triangle. And by looking at the angle, you know what is the uh, angle here, the, the range at which you can do the, the detection. And uh, for, a, for a plane flying at 10 kilometer altitude, uh, 33,000 feet, you see that this range should be around 350 kilometers. So that means that theoretically we should be able to detect planes flying over Paris. Um, actually, what we did get is, is a flight up to 250 kilometers away. Uh, so you don't want to have grazing signal, but uh, 250 kilometers is, is well feasible with software defined radio receivers. So that gives you a bit of a hint of, of how far we can detect planes. So as a conclusion, uh, we ported GRA cars uh, to uh, GNU Radio 3.8. Uh, doing so, we switched from FFTW to the GNU Radio FFT uh, class, allowing for multiple blocks to uh, run in parallel. We made the detection of uh, reception uh, lighter, uh, and, and now thanks to the multiple uh, um, ACARS uh, channel analysis, uh, thanks to multiple blocks running in parallel, we have narrow band detection, and, and we just detect a, a rise in standard deviation of a signal as, as a message being transmitted. And since at the moment everyone seems to want to save a world, can we do something about power consumption? Well, since uh, GNU Radio was ported, to the build root framework and build root allows for uh, cross compiling uh, tools to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, we got uh, Raspberry Pi 4 uh, and we're running uh, GRA cars on this uh, Raspberry. Here again, we have a nice match between uh, flightradar24.com and, and the messages that we decoded. So uh, rather than running a, a full uh, few hundred watt laptop, uh, you can just run uh, the multiple instances of, of uh, text mode, command line interface, uh, GNU radio running uh, uh, Jira cars. And um, the source code is available uh, on uh, the SourceForge uh, repository. Uh, you've got all the versions that were uh, implemented and this new clock synchronization is, is in the 3.8 new generation folder. So that's the 3.8 NG folder. And um, we're adding in the readme file how to cross compile to the Raspberry 3.4. So 
Thank you for attention. And if there is any question, uh, feel free to, to ask, uh, or you can always check the slides for a, a better uh, resolution uh, of, uh, of the various uh, screenshots that were shown. Thank you. Questions? We have a very short time now. It is not very long since the next speaker is waiting for his uh, next uh, talk. So, is there any question else? Well, uh, I think we have to finish now. When you have questions to Jean-Michel, he will be stay still available in the chat and will answer questions. And of course, uh, you can email him. He has a very good website and, <clears throat> and there you will find some contact uh, uh, and can ask him. Okay, so I want to go to the next studio uh, that we uh, hopefully now find the next speaker. Oh, sorry, I, I, I have to say a big applause to Jean-Marc. <laughs> Jean-Michel, thank you very much for all, and now I, I switch over to the next studio.